Hi folks, we're having a couple of technical issues in that Eki seems to keep disappearing from the session. Um, bear with me a sec, I'm trying to sort it out and I'll be with you in a moment. Hi everyone, so we're back. Sorry for that brief pause, technical challenges. Um, so I'm really delighted to welcome Eki Grumble to the session today. He's going to be talking about programmatic email content with smart blocks in Mortix Email Builder, which sounds really exciting. Uh, if you don't know Eki, Eki is a team lead for the community team in Mortic. He's been an active contributor in the world of open source for over 20 years, which is an amazing achievement. I mean, bow down to Eki for that. There's a lot of patience. Um, he heads up the team at Life for Digital Marketing, and he's also one of the voices behind the Morticast. So if you haven't checked out the Morticast, definitely do check it out. So I'm going to hand over to you now, Eki, and onwards with your presentation. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Ruiz. Uh, sorry for the trouble. All this tech stuff is just... <laughs> okay. And by the way, that was the best pronunciation of Leuchtfeuer Digital Marketing ever. <laughs> no, really. Good job. Um, yeah, let's let's talk about the builder. The, the Yeah, well, mostly used as the email builder, and, and the technical term here is Grapes.js. So if you hear that, that's we're using that... Uh, pretty much synonymously it's the default builder as of today um yeah just two seconds on, on leuchtfeuer we are a, a well marketing technology agency basically doing complex web projects on the one end and marketing automation on the other end and all, both of that with open source prod products uh namely type of three and modic and we strongly believe in not only using that but also supporting it, being part of it, and uh, uh, getting a lot of motivation out of, out of it also, and, but also value for ourselves and for our clients. Now, um, Mortic email, um, I think the Drop Solid folks this morning say, said uh, Mortic loves email, email loves Mortic, well, both ways, it's cool, isn't it? It can do not only static content, but also it can uh, custom fields and even dynamic content is that not cool yes sure it is but but there's more so let me show you a real quick demo uh not sure you've seen things like this before i'm entering a product idea id here in the builder and up comes some sort of contact based on on that data entered now i'm dragging another thing here and it gives me personal recommendations um whatever it means personal in, in the context of an editor and those are things that are way beyond just having a uh, dynamic content or or custom fields and that's all achieved by the thing in the grapes.js builder uh named the, the uh, blocks and um the power of that is what we want to, want to talk about that um bottom line I could could end the story here. Bottom line, by creating your own blocks and make, making them really smart, you can add a ton of value to the Mautic Builder. It can be way more intelligent than any other email system out there. So let's take a closer look. Uh, once again, the Builder, in fact, we do have multiple, uh, up to Mautic 3. We had a different Builder. It's still there. We can still call it the Legacy Builder. It, Spoiler alert, it is going to go away 99% safe with Mordic 5. So if you're still using the legacy builder, prepare for plan B. There are multiple options. Uh, if that applies to you, do talk to me because I'm a little bit involved in, in the decisions in the community and in the options as well. Um, from Mordic 4 on, the great JS builder is the default. So that's what we're talking about here. Um, and then, truth be told, there are other builders out there. There are SaaS providers who prefer to hook other email builders into Mautic. And yeah, Grapes.js is far from perfect. We all know that uh, there is uh, things that could be better, things that could be different um, in many ways. But but today we really want to focus on this, on the blocks and the power of blocks 
as it is today and where it could go tomorrow. Um, real life, let's see, the other end, we, we did uh, watch uh, the, the, the um, Dimitri from, from Stripo this morning. That's a typical workflow that some people do is create a beautiful email outside of Mordic, uh, take all the, well, template and uh, put it into Mordic and, and use it there. Yeah, people do that. Also, people have Mordic themes basically as a collection of, of uh, dummy snippets. So, of every um, type of content, there is an example, and then they do a lot of copy and paste and create their their next template with that as a basis. And then also there, there are situations where people have or run email campaigns on multiple brands, ha need to have multiple themes, and not only that, multiple content libraries, so to say, within their themes. Um, so that's pretty hard, and, and even that can be relieved using our Modic blocks. So we can do better. What does it mean? Um, what you can, in the end, do is, is create a much smaller number of themes, which are much more convenient, more, much more consistent to use. So, so for the user, it can be a really great experience, but uh, for the developer, it is not really straightforward, I have to tell you. Um, so, we just make it easy. Now, these are the blocks, and uh, we, you've seen that in the, the little demo already. This is what we call blocks. Uh, not blogs, blocks. Um, they they come. Th there is a collection that comes with Mordic. Typically, there are layout elements. There are even structural elements like uh, multi-column things, sections. But within those sections, there are blocks like here's a, an image, here is a, a nav bar, social element, etc. That's uh, what we do, and uh, these things can custom. And uh, the first simple example here is, um, well, I'm afraid this is a little tiny, um, to say, okay, I want to have smart blocks which react to the theme, let's say. Because the blocks are independent of the theme, but they can react to the theme. Though. So if, uh, if the theme for brand A has been selected, a button could be yellow if a theme for brand B has been uh, selected, then the button could be green. Let's uh, take a look here. I, I'm, by the way, uh, changing the language, so it could also now react to the language that has been chosen. And uh, I once again do this uh, recommendation, and it is now in, in German, no longer in French. And here's a button. And I can, could even, in this case, manually switch the the brand and uh, the button color will change accordingly. By default, it just matches, for instance, the, this orange thing in, in the menu. So it is has to do with this theme that I selected. So that's already much more powerful than you would, than you would think, because so many people struggle with, with they have uh, multiple flavors of what they do, and this makes things much easier. Now, the programmatic behavior, that is the other thing that I, I showed in the, in the initial demo. Um, let's take a closer look on the right-hand side. What I did enter here was a product ID, and based on the product ID, a some sort of element came up that has, uh, in this case, an image, a description, a, a price, a, a link on the button, etc. So it, a total element is it, it dropped into your email based on just the fact that I did enter a number. So what, what happened in, in retrospect, the editor in, inputs some data and then this, let's call it block, it uh, went to a database that via API in this case. It says, hey, give me all the data and all the information for this product ID. And uh, it took it and it, it put it into the email. And um, 
put a little bit of, of layout around it. So that is uh, pretty, pretty powerful. It can work without user interaction. If we could, for instance, just say, give me the latest news uh, based on RSS data or something else based on any other sort of interface, but it could even be controlled through user input. Um, there might, of course, be other uh, editor choices or input to make, like, like in this case, or in the previous case, I did select the brand to display. Um, and then it can also rely on, on email template things. So in, in the actual template where I have the, the headline and, and, and uh, the segments, uh, whatever, we also have, um, say, the language this is the one thing we already used, or maybe other things. Uh, and of course, these blocks can react uh, to that. Now, the headline says programmatic behavior at create time. And that's an important distinction because in the end, this block, um, this, this, these blocks just compile or create content and then still put it into the email as static HTML or, or MGML rather, or whatever, static content. Um, it has been created previously, uh, dynamically created previously. So, so there was a look up to the database. We had the picture of the shoe, but now we ha just have a picture in the email uh, as we would have had if we just created the picture manually. So that's fine, but there we can go even further. Um, that's what we call post builder processing. Um, things like programmatically updating things. For instance, uh, the price of the shoe has changed, but, so, but we don't want to send the, the old price for the next three months, so we just give it a daily update. Um, or something individual at delivery time based on the lead ID or, or custom fields, etc. Um, you know, on the right-hand side, with, with the recommendations, that's a pretty smart approach where we just use the, the, some custom fields as part of the URL uh, of those six images and also of the, the links behind it. And uh, on that basis, we don't have to do anything at delivery time. We already have the individual content as part of the email. Uh, other things may uh, require actual computation. Um, replacing custom fields uh, is, is default in Mordic, but doing more like an API lookup on an individual basis, you want to be really careful about that if you send a million emails uh, that might slow down your process uh, drastically. Yeah. Um, but it can be done. But it has nothing to do with the builder, really. It is beyond the builder. It is at, well, yeah, after we save or created and saved this email template, uh, it's what happens then. The only thing is that the builder may, might have to prepare for those later changes, like um, have a little marker on, on whatever needs to be replaced later on, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, but, but all this together gives you a crazy powerful setup. Um, so why not uh, why is not everybody using that? Um, <clears throat> first of all, it's not standard technology. Um, especially the second part is uh, there's nothing standard about it. It's, it's everybody finds their own ways around it. For the first part, even there, life is hard. The good news is um, the 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 builder technology, the the GrapeJS builder by itself, it is aware of the concept of plugins. So, cool, we have plugins. But no, we don't, because Mordic does not yet support that concept actively. We are currently discussing how it can be supported natively today, not there. Um, moreover, what makes it even harder, um, Mordic by itself is PHP, as most of us know. Grapes.js is JS, aka JavaScript, and um, is a totally 
different concept of creating and, and uh, changing code. So if you just want to change something on the Grape.js side, it's a different process than cha changing things on the Mordic PHP side. Um, bottom line, if you want to do what I just showed you before, that really means um, changing the Grape.js por portion, well, somewhere outside of, of Mordic, creating the Grape.js code outside of Mordic and de deploying it into your Mordic. So in the end, there is a builder.js, drop it into Mordic, make sure people clear the caches, and they have the new builder works, but the process is, is well, ugly. Um, how could we change that? How could it look much better in the future? Well, this is what you would dream of. The, the blue part on the top is what we have today with the Mordic and Grape.js, and then we have the Mordic Grape.js presets um, on top of it. So that's where we are today. Um, and if we want to do anything, as I just showed you, you have to patch the Mordic Grape.js presets thing and replace it by your own thing. Uh, what would be much better if there could be two, like like there is the, the Mordic presets and there is your custom presets set, and we would support uh, both in the gra inside of Grapes.js. Um, the really perfect situation would be if there was an open thing and you could add, just add plugin after plugin to Grapes.js. In the end, you are developing a new block and uh, just hook it in as a plugin, you're downloading a cool block functionality from the marketplace, um, hooking it into your Grapes.js, disabling it if you don't like it, etc. So that would be the, the fantasy where you want to be. Uh, again, we're not there yet. So um, you have to live with what you have. The good thing, again, is for the editor, they don't care, they just enjoy the power that's there. And that's also the motivation. Um, the cool things that we can build today, even if the process is ugly, is, is a really tremendous um, motivation to make all this easier for others as well. Yeah, that's uh, really the, the quick walkthrough. Um, for the re readings, there's not a lot. Uh, in Grapes.js, there's a documentation on plugins. On Mautic, you have the docu documentation on the Grapes.js preset um, bundle and uh, including good documentation how to create your own code if you have some changes. Um, and then if you want to be more active, you're invited to go to the Grapes.js uh, Slack channel where all the action and discussion is happening. Yeah, um, I think we are pretty well in our time. And uh, Ruth, I think we can already go to question if, questions if there's any. Yes, absolutely. Sorry. Let's have a look. So we've got a couple of questions. Are you ready? Let's go. So the external data was written in Mautic in the moment of creation or taken from the email on the send day by the data again. OK, yeah, um, I, I guess this was before I, I commented on that explicitly, but I, I, I better try to explain it once again, because it's an important concept. Um, as long as we're inside of the builder and then we close the builder, um, then we are saving things in our email template as we did before. And let me a step back a little bit for everybody who's not so familiar with the concept. We have themes in Mordic, which are basically um, prepared um, dummy emails. And then we have email the actual email template where, where we say, okay, this is the, the, the real content that we want to send out based on campaigns or based on uh, segments. And uh, in those email templates and the actual email, uh, those are just a block of uh, 
code, right? Um, and that's static code by nature. And things that we do inside of Grapes.js all writes into that block. And, th and then the, the other step that is, again, beyond the builder is that we can also, or there are ways to, to um, do things at send time or, or on the send day, maybe even prior to sending. Uh, but that's a little, a little more tricky and the relationship to Grapes.js is rather loose because we, what we do here is prepare for the things that happen later on. In reality, we frequently have that combination that, that something gets created dynamically at edit time, gets saved as static content and then gets overhauled at send time or, or periodically like daily. Okay, thank you for that answer. And thank you for asking the question as well. Really appreciate it. So let's bring up the next question. What is the current workflow to set that up? Uh, <laughs> okay, I, I <laughs> try to describe it roughly without being too technical. And um, maybe I, I try again. Um, the one thing is obviously that you need to uh, create the, the sort of the piece of program code that that represents a block, right? So so that that's real. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's JavaScript. It's in in Grapes.js, and uh, that's as as it is described in in the documentation that, that I put the link in. So that it's rather easy, and I can do that and play around with it in, in vanilla uh, Grapes.js. And again, Grapes.js is a third-party product that's embedded in Mordic, and the hard part now is to get it into Mordic. And um, so what we do, maybe there already is a better way, but we, we've talked to many people and uh, nobody has a better way as of today, is take that code and put it into um, the, the, the Mordic Grapes.js presets bundle. That's, that's a, a repository in, in, our, our, uh, in our code base in, in GitHub. Um, it's open for everybody. So what you have to do is fork that, create your own flavor of, of um, the presets bundle, add your own functionality, add the next functionality, add the next functionality, all that into one bundle, into one repository. And then um, out of that repository, there is a workflow to uh, create the, to compile, in effect, the, the JavaScript code needed. Again, the, the core of it is a single file called builder.js. Um, if you follow the workflow that's described in, in the presets bundle, in the Mordic presets, uh, the Mordic Grapes.js presets bundle. Um, and in the end, you, you have a, a bunch of files. Out of that, you only need to the builder.js file, which then gets deployed to your actual Mordic installation. As I said, that's uh, pretty unclean. It, 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 we, we have a bit of uh, automation in this at, uh, by now. It, it was a bit of a struggle in the beginning. Um, we now have that workflow in place, and it's well, it's it's like an artifact within the the actual deployment process, but um, we're, it's it's under control. It's not rocket science. It's just something different than we normally all do. Okay, great. Thanks for that. And I know that there's been some discussions in the product team recently about fundamentally changing how everything works under the hood. And I think it was your team who were proposing that those changes, wasn't it, Eki? Yeah, there was an initial proposal and then, then others came, came up with, with a uh, even more advanced concept. I think Jan was mm. the first one to, uh, to suggest that. And the status quo in the discussion now is, and, and that's a discussion about how to best allow uh, 
hooking additional plugins in uh, next to to the Mordic presets bundle. Um, I think we, we have a little bit of common vision now, which concept, which technology is one, one we want to explore. And the next step is to really explore it. Of course, right now, much of the focus is on Mordic 5, but, but uh, maybe alongside of that, we can already make some progress here because I want, I, I really want this to happen. Um, and let me add something else. Um, as I said in the beginning, we all know GrabJS is far from perfect, and then the, there are other things in GrabJS that we need to improve on, like like tokens uh, in in the editor and all that. But um, if we do that, uh, and if we in parallel do what what I just showed here, uh, I think the 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 foundation. Is, is pretty powerful. We, we just need to leverage what it could do. Yeah, and I don't know if people are aware, but the training course that we had on the uh, day, in the day yesterday from Joey, all of the money that we earn from that is actually going straight to improving the Great Stress Bill. So we've actually got some funding to work on that Ooh. as well. So. <laughs> okay, so next question up uh, from Rahul Shinde. Uh, for Post Builder, are those tokens for post builder, are those tokens which will be replacing the data? Are those tokens? Yeah, well, um, that, that's what we do beyond uh, um, custom fields or modic tokens is completely proprietary. Proprietary, proprietary, my favorite word. Um, it is kind of tokens. Um, it is no, we're not quite the same. It's more we, we, internally we call it markers because it, it flags where things need to be replaced. It's not like at this point pull um, lead information and put it in here, but uh, at this point, please hook in some some external logic and and uh, update the data to the latest and greatest or to the individual data so it's it's more like markers but but th that's words it it is not it is not what we have in in uh in regular modic like like uh lead contact field or or company field not sure that answers the question right. but um, maybe you want to yeah um rahul if you have anything to follow up from that you can drop it in the yeah. comment Thank you. Okay, um, so uh, Nitty has a question. I keep pressing the up vote instead of show on stage. Um, my brain isn't quite working. Uh, which DV have you found to be most compatible to implement here? Ooh, I'm confused. <laughs> um, we're, we're not using any database here. Well, when, when we access the Mautic database, well, and, and per, certainly we don't create our own database uh, connection here. What we do is uh, provide an API to the Mautic database if we need to. So, for instance, we have our product data in the Mautic um, and provide it to GrapeJS through an API. And uh, from, from the block, we access that API. That's the way we access the database. And we don't care a bit what what sort of product is being used. As obviously, Mordic is is in love with My, MySQL or MariaDB. Um, we're not using anything uh, on our own. Or maybe I miss. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No. Thanks for that. Um, if there's any clarification points on that, please just pop a comment on the. Um, question and then we can come back to that okay and the last one so this one is from daniel my understanding is that the current great js in mortic is custom for mortic would it be possible for mortic to use the main great js and use plugins for the custom stuff that's needed to work with mortic thus keeping great js to the stable version oh, oh, oh. i i cannot really answer it i'm, I'm not Deep enough, deep enough of uh, inside of this um, to answer it. My my understanding is different, but it might be wrong. Um, 
basically we are using Grapes.js. We there are two ways of bridging Grapes.js into third-party products. We, the, cho the choice was made for one option that, that has some implications, but um, but but they're, they're thin ice for me. I, I don't know the details. I don't know the future of that. But 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 if we are using Grapes.js, we have the option to upgrade to to or to to the mainstream. Uh, latest and greatest. Um, the the real customization for Mordic is or should be in in, in the presets bundle. Um, but Ruth, maybe you you may even more than myself here. Yeah. So my understanding is that the majority of the Mordic specific stuff happens in the Grapes.js preset. That's where we create blocks that are relevant only to Mordic. And then in within Multic itself is where we pull in the framework that kind of loads all of that. Uh, but I, I'm not as deep in the weeds as some people like Adrian um, from Ivy, who his team have been doing a lot of work alongside your team on the builder. So I think that would be a good question to sort of punt over to the product team um, and have them respond to. If you wanted to post that in Slack on T-product, that's where the product team hang out. So... Okay, let me just check if we have any other unanswered questions. I think we're okay. Um, so I have a question for you, Eki. Um, so this keynote that we had this morning from Dimitri about Stripo sounds quite similar to some of the things that you've been talking about. Do you have any thoughts about what he was saying about uh, Stripo and modular email design and how that might come into Mortic or whether that's something we need to do more work on? Hmm. Yeah, you can imagine that um, if you watch the keynote and um, now w watch what I just showed you, there, there's a certain overlap. And uh, the, the Stripo things are in many places way more elaborate, uh, elaborate than, than where we are today. So, so a ton of inspiration for one thing. The other is, of course, that I, st I have to admit, I still don't see how this connection is really made between an, an external system like Stripo and, and Mordic, and then on the other hand, uh, Mordic data, user data, product data, or whatever. Um, so for me, th this entire talk was more like like inspiration. It, it was also verification in, ter in terms of yeah, they also want to, uh, or, or they, they also stress that, that this this more 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 intelligent building blocks are important. Um, there are concepts that we don't have today that, that we that I would love to see. There are some things that are even better on our end and of course the deep integration with Mordic is something that nobody else can can easily replicate. Um, I have to admit for me the goal at this point is not to um, come up with a Mordic that, that has the full power uh, on a level that we saw this morning. It is more li like uh, to give that power to a single client in a single project that needs the power. And the way there is, is just more rocky that, than it would be if we were on a different level. Now, that's, of course, step one. And then step two is exactly this thing that, that step by step, uh, we want to follow a vision and make Mordic even better and, and potentially the best thing in the world to do things like that. And uh, step by step, is on many pa paths in parallel. This path is about smart content blocks. Other paths are about a much nicer editor, maybe, or, or things like that. So it, I did not really expect, I have to admit, that this, this huge overlap. I, I was more expecting a, a conceptual uh, keynote, but it was really fun for me to, to match it. And I'm looking forward to discuss deeper with Dimitri. Yeah, I think it was really interesting sort of sparking some ideas. I was thinking, oh, at the moment we're so like, we create custom blocks, the developers create custom blocks for the marketers, right? 
And I was thinking, oh, yeah, I can see why it would be really helpful for marketers to be able to create a block and save it and then reuse it. Like, I can see that would be helpful. And there were some other ideas that, yeah, just really inspiring. So I agree. It's something we can definitely take inspiration from. Um, so let me just check if there's any other questions that are unanswered. I don't think so. And I did just hop through all of the comments, and I think we've also addressed all of the comments that came on the Q&A. So that means that we have a little bit of time left over after the session. So before everyone runs away, there's a few things that you can do. You could go to the lobby and chat with Eki afterwards. You'll be on the table in the lobby, what I assume, Eki, to have a chat with people. Sure. Awesome. Um, so if you have any questions, do hop over there and, and have a chat. Um, you can also take the time to provide some session feedback. So on the left-hand side where the chat is, you'll see that second from bottom is session feedback. So do take some moments to just give feedback. If you enjoyed the session, we'll share it with Eki. Be, be nice. <laughs> um, and, yeah, have a great rest of your day. Eki, yeah. is there anything else you want to say before we close? I absolutely want to say what is also on this slide. Uh, that is, uh, many people in, in my team have been involved with this thing, and then uh, some are working with it every day. But I specifically want to uh, mention Irfan and Hannes, who are also active con contributors to the Mordic uh, product, who are yeah, who are the, the masterminds behind, on the technical side on, on doing this, and they will also be contributing to the Grab's Dress. Uh, project going forward uh, to, to bring this to the public. Yeah, other than that, yeah, thank you everybody for listening you. and I'm looking forward to any feedback and uh, please come to the lounge right now. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much and we hope you have a good rest of your event. See you later. Bye. Ooh.